All right, guys, so today we're going to work on prepping our walls because I'm going to paint. So all of these walls are a different color. Um, they redid part of this back here, so it bugs me it's never matched. These are all old and beat up. So I'm going to start with these walls and see how it goes. Uh, from what I read, first you have to just break the surface. Um, there's a protective surface on these boards, so you need to break it just with the sander. Um, I just hit it. If you can see, real light, just scuff it. And then I got this little pad. I'm going to do those corners and all the small areas. So we'll get that started. <laughs> So I have this all sanded. I use the sander and a little sanding block. Got this all done in all the small areas. Remember to take everything off the walls. Take your plates off and have everything ready. Now I've got a couple of spots that don't have tape. I'm going to have to figure something out because I couldn't find any locally. Um, and then I'm going to start filling holes. Now another thing um, any little areas like along this cabinet, any areas that they have silicone, um, silicone will repel the paint, repel the paint. So if you, if it's over onto the wall, you might want to just go ahead and scrape that off. You can always caulk it once you're done. It'll look much better, a cleaner line. So something to think of, take off any silicone that you don't want uh, the paint to oppose. All right, so now we are going to wash all of the walls after we've sanded them. I'm going to use this TSP cleaner. The directions are on the back. It's a quarter cup or a half a cup with two gallons. And I'm just going to wipe the walls down. It's got a lot of dust on them and yucky stuff. So wipe them down with this real good and we'll let them dry till tomorrow. Then we'll start sanding and filling in. Wipe it all down good. Nooks and crannies. Good time to hit your windows. And I'll do the rest of it. Okay, so we've patched up a few of our areas with tape. Um, I had some peel and stick wallpaper that I just put there and down there and then I sanded the finish off just like the other wallpaper and now I'm going to go through and fill all these holes because we're going to put up different blinds probably curtains so I'm going to fill all these little holes anything that's scuffed dented so many different options there um, so Remember that your prep is actually what makes your paint job look good. So if you don't prep it good, have a nice good surface, your paint job is not going to look great. So we have this uh, spackling. This is the stuff that's pink and goes to white when it's dry. So I'm just going to take a dab of that get in the hole. And then scrape it so it's flat. It's the most important thing because if you leave a hump, it's just going to be more to sand. And then it's not going to do any better of a job. So we'll go over here. Nice sharp putty knife. So many holes. Oh, that's going to take more. Oh, all right. Some of these deep ones may take more than one to 
layer so you might want to just fill it as you can let it dry and then add another layer of it I am gonna work on this and then I'll show you the finished product okay you can see all the spots that are drying hit that one with the second coat a few up there around there so now I am going to go get some goof off because right here we had some stickers by the stove and that adhesive is not gonna take paint so I am gonna make sure I get that adhesive off beforehand all right so I just put a little goof off on the old cotton All that comes off as well as my nail polish which is already yuck so make sure you just do it by feel until there is no sticky left anywhere you have stickers you'll want to make sure you do this all right so our pink to white is dry in a lot of places so I'm just gonna hit it quick with my sand and block knock it out and I just go by feel and we will get all these sanded quick okay once it's sanded I always like to just go over it with a cloth make sure all that loose dust is off and then you also need to sweep up where you've sanded because you want to work clean. Any dust or anything on the floor might get into your paint. So you want to make sure it's all clean. All right, guys, time to caulk. So if you don't caulk these little side pieces, it's just not going to look as finished. Um, paint's not going to hear all the way in there so you want to get yourself a flex caulk um, this will flex as the RV moves because you know RVs are always moving so the key is on these because it's a very small space you're gonna just cut a little hole on it and an angle and I'm gonna move very fast okay I've got them all caulked got that one and that one, and that corner, that corner, that little strip, that corner there, um, and then I did that corner right in the, and then I did that corner. So hopefully that'll make them all flow easily. Oh, I did also up there because that was a hot mess on both sides and again I had already stripped all of the silicone off so it's not going to repel that all had silicone you know just all kinds of places you have to look for it I stripped it off I'm going to paint because um, I'm going to get a clean line right there if I don't put silicone back in so I'm going to go ahead and paint it all and then I will silicone that back um, instead of doing the paint because then you got to go the paint in the middle and I don't know just a preference for me so we're gonna let this all dry it says two to four hours but we'll see I may leave it overnight just to be sure and then we can start priming all right guys so we are ready to paint I've got everything prepped now I have done tape in some areas where the carpet is and then up here where these are also fabric and then up here is carpet there's a little fabric thing there and then I've got some fun area up there that's only about an inch in both areas it's a good time to use some artist paint brushes you can get these in the craft section really good just to get in those small areas so we're going to start off with primer. 
So this time we are going to use some Zinsser uh, Fast Primer and Sealer. You can see that there. This is just really good to seal and to bond um, to help your paint stick to the walls. Now, I don't have a lot of big walls today, so I'm just going to use my handy pail and little tiny roller, little roller, cut in paintbrush. And then I've got just a wallpaper smoothing tool. Sometimes if you need to just put it down in some areas so that um, it'll protect an area, that's a good thing just to have. Um, please, pick, please tape at your comfort level. I personally, um, I used to professionally paint a long time ago, so I just cut in and if I get it on something, I'd rather wipe it off if it's a hard surface. Um, a lot of times if you paint, it will get underneath of that seal and actually dry there. So personally, I prefer just to cut it and wipe off any area, but please tape to your comfort level, whatever that may be. So I will go ahead and get um, my paint ready and then we'll do some cutting in. Another thing real quick guys, is you wanna make sure you have your tarps down or whatever you have to protect your flooring. Um, I prefer painting tarps with a either rubber or a plastic sealed background. If paint does spill, it doesn't get through it. Personal preference. Um, and painting clothes. Anybody else have their favorite painting clothes? So these are so old that these are from the last time that big legged jeans are in. <laughs> I just tend to stick with them. But um, we'll go ahead and get started painting here. Here is another pro tip. On any roller, you want to take some tape and then just defuzz it. If you do this to any painting roller, it's going to get all that little fuzz and any junk that's gotten in it from laying around or it's just going to get all that off and that's stuff that's not going to be on your walls then. So that's going to give you a cleaner paint job. Um, another tip is when you get your paint, have them shake it up. Even if it's just primer, if they shake it up, it'll do a lot better job than um, you stirring it. So if you just have them shake it up when you buy it, um, it'll be one step closer. And then of course stir it when right before you do. But that's gonna really help. It's all will be mixed up really good then. Um, I will say your primer, I have kind of two sets of everything because <clears throat> primer is kind of hard to get off. So I always use the older paintbrush and the older paint pail for my primer just because it doesn't clean up as good. And then um, I use the nicer stuff for when I use the actual paint and cut in. So I will go ahead and start painting. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting in. So a little tip too is you don't need a ton of paint to cut in. The worst thing you can do is have a big glob. So when you go up close, you're going to want to just take a little bead of paint and pull it along. And then I just follow up with a heavier, heavier amount. So you do an angled brush and then you just push it in like this so it just hits the surface. Then you can just come along and smooth it all out. And that is how I like to do that. And then I will go ahead and get my roller ready. Kind of just make sure the first time it's got a little bit of paint stuck in that nap and in the corner. I love these because they have a little corner thing. Not that I'll use it much here with all the trim, but then I'm just going to come like this. And I like to just get rid of those paint lines, possible. Make sure you don't have any lines, just thinner out. Make sure it gets in all those cracks. Your first coat, you're not going to want to. Put on really goopy thick 
this coat's just to get it to stick basically it's going to seal that so that should be all it needs now i'm going to start going i don't have brian here to hold this he's busy doing something else so i'm going to go ahead and get painting and i'll show you some more later okay guys just to show you a corner so this is where i sealed you can see how flat it's coming in and right here where this is i didn't get it very good and you see how it has that big line of emptiness and it just kind of looks messy? That right there is why we caulk the corners. Alright guys, so I got to this corner and I realized I must have missed a little bit of silicone because look. See how that's repelling the paint? That is what happens. So we'll have to wait till this dries and scrape her all off. So that's the importance of getting all the silicone off because that just looks messy. On a good note, it's coming along. It's looking much brighter. All right, first section is done. That looks so nice and bright. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so a couple of areas that I'm going to have to use the artist brush is right in here. And just notice there's a little strip going down there. So, artist brush, so much easier. All right, little crevice painted. Okay, kitchen section done. It's making my cabinets pop. Okay hey guys, so here is an area over the bunk, a little tiny spot, and I'm just going to get that on in there. See how easy that is? It's another tip guys, Glad press and seal. So we're going to go in for a little while and have lunch, so I don't want my brushes and rollers to dry out. So I just press and sealed it all up, covered up my artist brush, and that way I can just leave and not worry about it drying up. Alright guys, so i got to get in this little corner. Yeehaw. So what I'm going to do is put the slide in a little bit. Check that out. Yep. Get in behind there a lot easier that way, just a smidgen. All right. First coat of primer, all done. So I'm only doing the first half of the RV right now. As you can see, you have all the stuff shoved in the other areas. And then I'll get time to switch it and do the back, hopefully. Okay, so I'm looking at my directions here, and it says one hour until you can coat it again. So we did this two and a half hours ago. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my second coat. And just another little tip. If you were by chance doing this a darker color, I'm just going to do this like an ivory cream color. But if you were doing it a darker color, to help that paint coverage you can get your primers tinted so um like if you're going to do a red a gray primer is a really good uh filler on there it's going to cover your red way quicker red actually has the largest molecules of a paint so all those areas in between the molecules show through so it actually is the hardest paint to cover so if you use red as your primer on that it's going to cover um, way better than it ever would so just a little tip okay guys there is two coats of primer you can see that now there's not as much uh, see-through. It's pretty solid looking. So I'm going to let this dry overnight. That was just Maggie and Dad. <laughs> I'm going to let this dry overnight and then tomorrow we'll try with some color. 
So this day is day two of painting. Today we're going to put the color on. Um, I really like the Sherwin Williams Infinity brand. I feel like the coverage is really good. Um, I chose this kind of an off-white creamy color. It's called Divine White. Um, everything in here is kind of warm tones. Um, I have a lot of tans. Just the color of the cabinets. My husband won't let me paint them, so I'm going to work with it and do the best I can to bring out the color and the richness. So I'm going to use this Define White. Hopefully it covers in one coat. That's happened in the house a lot, but if not, um, I'll go ahead and put two on. I went ahead and got a uh, little bit nicer brush out. Again, I like the angled curve, angled one, a handy pail. I got a new roller out since it's a new color and I de-shagged de it with my tape. And we're going to go ahead and get another coat on here and see what it looks like. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see this, but the important, important part of painting is to always keep a wet edge. So as you can see, I am trimming in the sides, cutting them in. And then as I have a certain portion done, I will go ahead and roll that so that you always keep a wet edge going. Otherwise you may lift off some of the paint as it dries and it'll give you like those streak marks on your finish coat. So, um, or you can cut in the whole thing and once it's dry, you can roll it all, um, at whatever your preference, but don't cut it in while it's still damp. Um, then roll over it because it'll leave marks when the shine at the end, you'll notice the roller marks and it won't look as good. So keep that wet edge. Okay, here's the first little bit on. I think that is really, oops, turn this brightness down there. I think that's really looking good. Um, so much brighter in here with that. So it's not a bright stark white, but it's a nice kind of off-white cream. Neutral. But the walls are like brand new, all clean, no smudges. No dirt. It's awesome. Well, we got it all done. So it only took one coat of color, and then I did two coats of primer. This this paint really covers nice, which is why I keep using it. Uh, let me flip the camera around, and I will show you the how it looks at the end. All right, here is the done. I don't know if you can see how it's kind of off-white. It's so hard to see colors with this. Look at all of that. And that's all the furniture we've squished back there. <laughs> and the kitchen already so excited to get all this finished some curtains hang up and maybe get some furniture brought back in all right guys so a tip when you're done with your little roller just take it off and wrap it in glad press and seal and then anytime you have a spot that needs touched up like this one in my laundry room i can just touch it and then that'll dry normally. And then you're going to want to take this, wrap it up real good, and just put it in your refrigerator. Okay, guys, it's all done. And I caulked all these little edges. It just gives it a finished look. And this time I did use paintable caulk. That way, if we have to do it again, I don't have to worry about it not um, adhering the paint. So I used eggshell. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's a nice neutral color. Cocked all those corners as best as I could. Cock, cock, cock. And now I get to order some curtains and get the furniture put in. So today I'm going to show you the finished product. We finished painting the RV interior, the first half of it. Um, I'm gonna do the second half later. And we really love it. It feels so much homier. 
Um, I would really recommend it if you want your RV to feel less dark and, you know, less like a home. Um, the curtains really, really helped, I feel like. So I just thought maybe by doing this video, it would help um, anybody else that wants to paint the interior of our RV. I haven't been thinking about it. So this is what you do. Okay, what started this journey was replacing this refrigerator. And it just got me going on the rabbit hole of renovating. So the cream turned out really nice. Very neutral. And then I uh, did these curtains. They're really cute. Um, they're probably a little too see-through. So I'm going to get a probably another one to back behind it just for a little bit of light darkening later, but I do love how the light shines out. So this is the couch that I got from Wayfair. Um, I love it. It's really cute and comfortable. It came in a big box and just clipped together. So it was super easy. I would recommend it. It's nice to lay down on. So whoever wants to lay down and watch TV can take a nap. People can come over and sit on that if we have guests. And then, of course, we put two recliners in this time. So that will be super comfy for both of us. And then I got this washable rug from Wayfair. Um, I really like it so far. It's really cute. And it's thin. So it's supposed to, to uh, go in the washer. And I'm just going to roll it up in between. And the cats just really like, cat and dog like, curling up on a rug so if I put had a little rug in there before and they both just try to squeeze in there so I decided we just get this it also helps keep this very light floor I'm getting dirty so I'm hoping that that works for us and then I did this little kitchen nook I think that turned out good same curtains and we did mount this knife holder since I had the other side open, I could go through and support it a little bit because it's kind of heavy. This is the old wallpaper that I'll have to continue to paint. That one was different than the front one. So this is the butcher block cutting, uh, cutting board that we put on ourselves. Um, that door does not open because it just has all the plumbing and stuff behind there. So we just put this over top of it. Um, those... Braces are just from Amazon, and they fold right down while we travel. So we really like it. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And I'll try to help you out. Here's Pupper Dog. Going for a little boho theme, so... Thank you again for watching our video. Remember to like and subscribe and we'll have other travel videos and maybe a few how-tos like this as we do something. Thank you.